all right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody must be full of noodles or chicken. What's going on? Hey, everybody all right? Man, I've been trying to get the computer hooked up so I could th we, we could throw down on some worship tonight, but we've had some technical glitches, but that's all right. Y'all doing okay? Glad to have Brother Jones, Sister Kim, and back. They family now. Come on, just look at your neighbor and say, they family now. They family. If, they, if they've come back after the last two serm uh, uh, sermons, two messages on uh, on angels and uh, and and saw me just as 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 natural as I could be they they're glutton for punishment so we're going to feed them some more tonight everybody doing okay enjoying the weather no rain in sight no rain in sight look at your neighbor and say no rain in sight are y'all talking to one another tonight or what's the, what's what's up Oh, man, good. Hey, we got a lot of good things going on. we got classes everywhere. I don't know what's going on with our hours, but uh, uh, glad to have Miranda in service uh, tonight. She'd been in the Acts 29, and we uh, divided that up, and so it could be the college and career class. And uh, some that graduated from youth came downstairs, and, and, uh, and then they had the 18 all the way up to Miranda's 43, 44? No. No, she's not. Uh, but the young marriage and so uh, some, some shifting going on and around, but we're glad to have her in service with us. And we, we love her anyway. And uh, we love her and tolerate her husband, Robert, but that's just what we do. Uh, wow, it's going to be one of those kind of services tonight. Do, do you love Jesus, though? All right, well, if I just go to preaching about Jesus, that, that's where the amens come. Jesus is good. The Holy Ghost is good. He, he wants to bless you. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. God bless you. Might as well stop on a good note. Amen. Um, hey, a couple of things coming up. Hall uh, we don't do Halloween, but we call it the Hallelujah Festival. A lot of people have different um, opinions about this. Well, you're really celebrating Halloween and you're just calling it another name. Well, let me, let me, uh, y'all know what, what we do, but Joe and, and Kim don't. But we don't celebrate Halloween. I uh, preached on it, preached against it, Hallow's Eve and all of that. We don't celebrate it, uh, that. But um, Ginger, uh, I guess about three years ago, said she wanted to do it on Halloween. That if they target our, if, if, if Satan and, and, all the occultists target our holy days to, uh, I don't know, cause us to, somebody's throwing down upstairs. I ought to be throwing down, up, uh, downstairs. Uh, if they're going to target our holy days, we need to target theirs. And on that Thursday the 31st, we take this day. We have a Bible con uh, costume contest. I'm coming to Sampson this year. Either that or the donkey that Jesus rode in on. Um, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time. But there's going to be cotton candy, uh, candy, um, hot dogs, popcorn, hug drinks. I mean, we we take that night and we teach them not to say trick or treat. We just tell them you're blessed. And if you want your children to come and just get some free candy in the name of Jesus then you just bring them up. We'll load them up on cotton candy and chocolate. And, um, yeah, we have a Red Bull machine that's going to be coming out. We're just going to squirt some. No, we won't do that. But it's going to be a good time. But, but, and everything is free. Everything is free. Hayride, uh, trying to get a dunking booth here. Um, horses, we did a horse about last year. Was it last year? Yeah, yeah. Claire had a horse out here and horse rides and hay rides. And, and um, so it's a lot of things going on. And that's coming up just in about a month. Wow. So what we need is hot dogs. Um, Dan and I started buying our candy in the bags. And um, um, if you go to Walmart, pick up a bag of candy. It doesn't matter. Bring it to the church. And, and, and I'm... I'm not fighting for candy this year. 
I, I got the good, the good stuff, the Baby Ruth, the Reese's, and the Kit Kats, and Twix, and all of that, and I put it in the ice room, called Ginger for accountability, and uh, I did, I'm serious, I did. She said, put it in the ice room, Pastor. I said, okay. So we did, and uh, so if you want, if, if you're going to Walmart, pick up, you know, as many packs of hot dogs. We catch them when they're on sale, 79 cents cents and we'll buy 10, 20 packs. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a McDonald's stop or that's a, um, a Wendy's, you know, windmill. And so we can go with that and so, uh, pick up some hot dogs and some candy. Uh, we've got the popcorn, I think. We've got the cotton candy. Um, there's just going to be a ton of stuff now. The fire truck will be here. Uh, what we've been trying to do, and I called Frog, and Frog doesn't have his pilot license, but we were wanting to have helicopter rides this year. And what we were going to do was I was going to nominate all of the board members to be on a, a harness track, and they were going to go up. <laughs> In the <laughs> I can't even finish that joke, amen. Oh, come on, you've, you've seen it. You've want, there's been times when you've wanted to see a preacher strapped up to a helicopter. Amen. But, but that didn't work out. Frog had his license for years and years, but health conditions, he doesn't have his license anymore. So we, uh, uh, we're just going to have a good time. And uh, uh, Christmas production is going to begin, I think, next Wednesday night uh, for the kids. And so we have a lot of things going on, and it's going to be, uh, a, a good time. Aren't you glad for a good church that has a lot of good things going on for you? Look at your neighbor and say, that's right, neighbor. All right. Well, come on, get, get an offering ready, and uh, let's, uh, let's give God some offering. Hey, Sister Smith, thank you for cooking tonight. Well, thank you for serving. I cook. I cook. If you, if you haven't eaten, there's plenty of food left. And this is, hey, this is just relaxed Bible study night. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get all crunk and lit. Well, I might get crunk and lit, depending on how Bible study goes. But, but Sister Dana, we had an Olivia's birthday party last night. And um, she cooked for the cafe tonight. And, uh, boy, somebody's having church upstairs. Hallelujah. Maybe we might want to go up there and have a... Holy Ghost hold down with them. But thank you, Sister Dana, for cooking uh, tonight. And, uh, oh, the Hallelujah Festival, we do have sign-up sheets out in the back. I'm going to pass this around. And so you can sign up if you want to. And uh, uh, I think the, the kids have a, um, uh, Bridget, I don't have a, a pen anywhere, sis. Um, Sister Dana's purse is over here. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, amen. There's a pen in the back, okay. Uh, Bridget, that's Kim. Kim, that's Bridget. Amen. So, um, thank you for, for giving. And the sign-up sheet is if you'll do a, a game or a trunk or a treat or whatever. And we do focus on a Christian theme. We do focus on a Christian theme. So, uh, there'll be a, a, a little gift card, uh, something, some little gift given away. And uh, we try, now listen, we do try to keep this tailored to the kids. But look, if you're bold enough to come dressed up as a, b a Bible costume, I'm not. We'll, we'll throw you in the contest too. Amen. But uh, but it is going to be a good time. It starts at six o'clock, and uh, um, over about eight thirty, and so uh, we'll have a we'll have a grand time that night. Would you say amen? All right, grab your Bible if you have it, and let's, uh, let, can, we, can we open up the Word? We have been talking about heaven. We've been talking about an open heaven. We have been talking about um, the glory of God. We have been talking about uh, the kingdom of God being restored back to the earth. What Adam lost in the garden, Jesus came and restored that to you and I. The Bible said in Psalm 8, and, and we've been tying it in, we have, we have literally, and it hasn't really been intentional, it's just been by the direction of God. 
uh, just leading me. But we have we have built upon line upon line and precept upon precept, and it's just been amazing how God's taken someone who didn't know anything about the kingdom a little over a year ago and just really began to shift my entire mindset concerning what God wants to do in this earth. God wants to do something in the earth. And it's not to come to church and save Ronnie just so Ronnie can have some fire insurance. Amen. God didn't come and die on Calvary just so Ronnie wouldn't go to hell. Salvation is a great, a great incentive to not want to go to hell, but he didn't save me just to keep me out of hell. Amen. And so we've talked about, we've talked about so much the glory of God. We've talked about what glory means. And, and you say, well, we've been studying this a long time, Pastor. Well, you can study something all you want to, but until you begin to apply it, until application uh, begins, it tells me that what you've been instructed on has never been applied. If, you, if, if you're learning what to do and what Jesus wants us to do in the earth and you never do it, it's as if you're just taking the knowledge that he's given you. Well, I think the writer says it like this, we've got to be doers of the word rather than just hearing. The word glory, it, it, it means several things. It means weight. In, in other words, uh, your, your words ought to have weight to it. Jesus never begged a demon to come out of a person. He just spoke the word and commanded it, and the devil came out. He never begged for Jairus' daughter, please get up. Lord, I got to pray again. Please pray. Uh, you know. No, he just spoke the word. He said, damsel, arise. And the Bible said she woke up. She, was, she had been dead. And so your word ought to have some weight. It ought to have some power. You ought to be able to speak. And God's so impressed with the, your word, the integrity of your word, that God backs up your word just like he did Joshua in the sun standing still. Your words ought to have weight. It, glory means weight. It also means image. I am, oh Jesus. My, I am A G E. It, it also means image. It means reflection. This is, this is where we all should be. We all should want to have the image of Christ. Now, I understand that we're, we're developing this. Amen. How many of you have been serving God five years or longer? Then, then, then there's something you understand that where you were five years ago or ten years ago, there should still be a hunger for me to become more like Christ. Become more like him. That, that I speak what he speaks, I look like he looks, and, and his actions, my actions reflect his actions. And so we've talked about glory. We've talked about image. We've talked about reflection. We've talked about angels. We've talked about... Uh, Sunday we're going to conclude the angel series and so we've talked about uh, in the kingdom of heaven Jesus Jesus never came and preached the message of Jesus Jesus never came and preached the message of Jesus he never preached himself and as a matter of fact uh, you can only find one time in the scripture when they asked him Pilate said are you the son of God are you the son of God and finally he got so tired of them I say trying to get him to confess to who he was, he finally said, you said it, not me. He never came and preached himself. He came and preached the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. If the Baptist and the Methodist, the Assemblies of God, the Church of God, and the four square, the biggest square, no matter what kind of square, if we ever get that and we preach the kingdom of God, we'll understand our purpose in this earth. So we've talked, about, we've talked about the kingdom of God. We've talked about the word of God. We've talked about the glory of God, how he has crowned us that what Adam lost in the garden, Jesus came to restore. And then we, we, we kind of dipped our feet in, and I've, I've got to be honest with you. I, I, I approached something about a year ago. Some, some of you that's, that's followed this know where I'm going. We, we, we talked about portals. We talked about openings of how Lucifer, Jesus said, Jesus said this, and, and I've got to get back into what I started uh, tonight, um, but I'm, I'm really, I'm not far from the teaching on how Satan accesses the heavens. Remember we talked about three heavens? The, fir the first heaven, 
the heaven, uh, the third heaven, I mean. That's the abode of God. That's the throne room of God. The second heaven is uh, the firmament or uh, the expanse. And, the, and this is the first heaven is earth. And we've talked about angels. And we've talked about you've got a military. And we've, got, we've talked about, you know, you've got supernatural help. Daniel prayed. And he said, Lord, I need help. And the Bible said God heard his prayer and immediately sent his answer. But for 21 days, the Bible said, and his angel had, had, was fighting right here for 21 days, fighting right there in the middle because the Bible talked and we studied this, that Satan is not in hell. He's, he's called the prince of the power of the air or heavenly places. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Where are heavenly places? It's right here in the second heaven, the expanse of the firmament. We've talked about that, and we've talked about for 21 days, that's where uh, Daniel's angel had to fight, and for 21 days, that angel was locked in warfare, and finally God turned Michael loose, and when Michael got turned loose, he got his miracle. But he said this to Daniel, and I'm leading up to tonight, just laying a little more groundwork. Daniel prayed from here. It got right to there immediately. Are you with me? Got right there immediately. God sent the answer back, well, God sent the answer to Daniel, but it got called up right here. And for 21 days, that's why I go on a 21-day fast. That's one of the reasons why I go on a 21-day fast. There's the, the symbolism there is more powerful, and I don't have time to teach on it tonight. But for 21 days, warfare was going on, and finally Michael came down, got Daniel's angel with the answer that came from God, got it back down to, to Daniel, and, 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 and he said this. He said, Daniel... God heard you the minute you prayed. And the answer was sent. So when you pray and you have faith and you receive, when you pray, God sent that answer immediately. And every time you pray after that, you're just loosening your angels to go get what you're calling out. So we've talked about that. We've talked to, and it's just been amazing how God has, has taken this word glory and he said, okay, what well, Adam lost, I'm putting back on Joe and Kim and Billy and Andy and Ronnie and Frank and Bridget and Cody and I'm putting glory back on you. I'm putting weight back on you. Your words are going to have power. You're going to have my image. You're going to look like me. You're going to talk like me. And I want to talk like him. I want to... I want... This is so deep. You're speechless. That's what it is. They're speechless. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation. Amen. Because sometimes if you don't get the answer or the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, something that you're, you know, fish yourself and catch you anyway. So we've talked a lot about glory and weight and image and reflection and, 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 and our purposes, not just to come get saved and, 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 and sit on a pew and hear a sermon and go home and say, wow, what a wonderful message. So and I've learned more about the heavens the glory of God, the power. I've, I've learned more in the last year than I have in 30 years of ministry. More in, in the last year, a little over a year. But how the kingdom, I've learned how the kingdom operates. Um, I, I've learned the original intent of, uh, of God was to reestablish Adam, uh, his dominion, his original dominion in the earth through, through me and through you. That, that when we literally say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Macomb as it is in heaven. We are literally to be doing the works that Jesus did. Why, why be a Christian if we're not going to do what Jesus did? Why not be, why, not be, why are we going to uh, uh, call ourselves believers? They never called themselves Christian. They, they were just known as believers. So why are we going to follow the, the book that, he, that he's authored and given to us for all scripture is given by inspiration. So why are we going to be inspired by this word if we don't have the power that he has? Jesus went and healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out devils. Why aren't we doing that? Unbelief. We've gotten, we've gotten religionized to where we just come sit on the pew in the chair and we, and we never, Jesus never saved anyone in the temple. He saved them, delivered them, cast out the devils in the marketplace. And the temple where you come get instruction in the marketplace is where you're, you're supposed to perform the signs and the wonders. So, so we've talked about a lot about that. He gave Adam authority. He gave Adam dominion. Adam lost that. 
Jesus came and restored that to us. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got authority. You've got dominion. You've got glory. You've got honor. Now that's what the Word said, that he crowned man with glory and honor. That's what we're supposed to offer. Now look, just because you're crowned with glory doesn't mean you're going to walk around like, looking like a light bulb. But it does mean that when you walk in his image, you walk in that weight, you walk in that image, that reflection, that when you're in the supermarket, you walk by and tumors just start falling off of people. You walk by and somebody in sin just gets under conviction. Hey, man, what, what's up with you? What, man, I just, I just feel like I'm dirty, you know. They could have been in the club and having the best time. You walk past them. God's ordered and directed your steps. Next thing you know, you're winning somebody to Jesus right there in the meat section of Walmart. Why? Because of your weight and your image, your reflection. Anybody Jesus came into contact with, they understood. People, people who were sinners, they just wanted to come check him out. Zacchaeus climbed a tree. When's the last time you climbed a tree for Jesus? So Jesus came and makes him the Bible says in, in, in Galatians, we studied that, that, that it makes Jesus perfect when he raises up sons, sons and daughters. It makes him perfect when you become a son of God. But now, now how many of you have children? You got children? You got, you, do you tell your children what to do, what not to do? If they don't do it, what do y'all do? Don't spare the rod. This is, wait a minute, now this is the timeout generation. We don't do that anymore. I didn't, I didn't grow up in the timeout generation. I grew up in a woodshed generation. Amen. So, so, so you, you want your child to behave like you raised them, is that right? I've got a son that people say, he looks just like me. I don't know if that's, I, I call it a blessing. You may call it a curse, but I call it a blessing. Well, I want Jace to act like me. I want him to act better than me. I want my kids to do better than, than I do. Amen. So when, when you get saved, and, and the Bible says it makes Jesus perfect as he raises up sons, let me tell you something. When he talks about a son, he's not talking about a member of a church. When you talk about son in the Bible, it, it, it's talking about a position. Okay? It's talking about a position. It's not talking about church membership. You can be a member of a church and go to hell every day. Just because you're a member of a church doesn't secure, hey, look, well, never mind. I'm going to leave that one alone. Son in, in the Bible is talked about position. It is not maleness. It is not It is not gender. There's neither male nor female nor Jew nor Greek nor slave nor bond nor free. Listen, when, when a lady gets saved and a man gets saved and, and he calls us a son or a child of God, it's not talking about your, your economic status. He's talking about position. Where are you in the kingdom of God? What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Are you busy for the kingdom of God? All right, let, let me get to the meat of it. Listen. When, when Jesus raises us to glory, listen, the ultimate intention of Jesus, and I just said this, was for me not to go to hell one day, and that's a good incentive. But his intention of, of crowning you and I with glory, his intention of putting dominion and authority on you, that you should be able to speak. You know, you, when Adam lost his, his dominion, you understand that everything that Adam said happened just as Jesus said everything? Everything. The Bible said God, and God walked in the cool of, the, of the, the garden with Adam. That word cool does not mean 68 degrees, and I know some of us are still praying for 68 degrees. Yes, I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying. Someone said the other day, ooh, the leaves are falling. The leaves are falling. Troy was here last week. He said, he said Pastor, he said the leaves back here on the pecan tree are falling. whoop de doo what does that mean? He said, fall's coming. I said, really? I said, is that a sign? He said, yes, sir, that's a sign. And then somebody else said, the leaves are falling. The leaves are falling. The leaves are falling. I thought, that might be a song. The leaves are falling. It's a sign. And, and so, so I'm praying that the leaves fall and the temperature falls with it. 
down to about minus 16 degrees. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all know, how many of y'all know what my next statement is about to be? And snow just about that deep. Y'all got, no, y'all, y'all got over on the pastor last year. Y'all won. Y'all won. Look at your neighbor and say, you won last year. We were wearing shorts and flip-flops and baggy t-shirts on Christmas Day. Who wants that? I might as well live in Hawaii if I want, if I can want to get that. Aloha. Hukuna Matata or whatever. <laughs> Who's in McConnell? I don't know. Let me get back. Come on. Uh, and, and so when Adam spoke, what he said, Adam operated in the earth just as heaven operated, and God, when he lost that, God gave us that authority back because he said, when I come and I reestablish the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven on this earth, you're supposed to operate like I did. I want Macomb to operate just like heaven does. That's why I, I'm, I'm really sick of people dying with cancer after we prayed for them. We've got, listen, somewhere we've got to flip this now and we've got to start seeing the, the other side of it. The minute we say, now listen, let me give you two points here. He said, if we ever see a genuine miracle, revival will break out. It will, but hell will also. And don't, I'm telling you, when we first see that first miracle and it's coming, you just better batten down the hatchet, honey, and get ready because hell's about to hit, and you better learn how to, yeah, you better learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost before that moment hits. Adam would speak, and whatever he, whatever he called anything, it happened. Do you know, God, I'm, I'm getting too much into my teaching. I'm learning about these two trees. Whatever Adam said in the garden, I can't give you all of that. Whatever God, Adam said in the garden, whatever he spoke to, it happened. What Jesus said in the earth, it happened. And so what God wants us to do at FAM is be able to have some weight in our words so that what we speak in the earth, it reflects the image and the power and the intent of heaven to manifest on the earth. Tell your neighbor, say, you're supposed to be operating in kingdom culture. We talked about the kingdom culture, the culture of heaven in this earth. We're supposed to, your marriage is supposed to, it is supposed to, it'll never reach perfection on this earth, but you're supposed to be able to operate it very close. Meaning, 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 that if there's no, listen, I know there's not going to be any fighting or giving in marriage or marriage in heaven. I understand that. But when I get to heaven, I believe me and Daniel are still going to be together. 32 years. I'm not looking for something else on the side up in heaven. Well, I, I know that. Work with me. Work, work with me here. Work with me here. In other words, I should have enough of his word here on the earth that when, that when we hit a rough spot, I ought to be able to be able to speak to that chaos in our trouble spot in my marriage. And we could say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Satan's trying to, to bring some chaos here, and I can speak peace in two. And that's, not, that, that's for your children who are getting out there and, and for your finances and everything else. Man, come on, somebody. I, I, I know I'm not screaming, and, and, but I'm preaching. I'm teaching. So he wants us to have weight in that what, what we speak in this earth, listen, it ought to reflect the power of heaven. Now, now, now let me get into this. Now, now, in this earth, in this earth, God's intention, God's intention is that you and I to be a window in the earth, in Macomb, for which heaven could get back into this world. Now, Andy gave me this the other day. I've never seen this. And we've had the logo, and I've been talking about reaching the world and, and all of this, and I, I just settled for my, my neighbor next door and then my, my block and then the city, and you know. But Andy said he was looking at the sign of the logo up in the Baptistry fam, and he said, Pastor, you know what? If we really start operating in kingdom power, kingdom authority, kingdom dominion, you know what we'll do? I said, watch that. He'll say, he'll, he said, He said, you'll reach America. 
And I thought, you know what, that's pretty creative. And, and so, I, that, 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 that looks like an H instead of a, people online are going to say, he, that pastor can't spell. So he wants us, he wants you and I to be a window. What does that mean? That, he said that when you tithe and you bring your, your, your tithe to the store, prove me, test me, try me. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. He, he said, I want you to be a window to which I can get heaven back through you, back to the earth. Now, I understand a lot of people really don't want this because to have this type of lifestyle requires a deep commitment. It's not, it's not just about being a preacher, y'all. It's not just about being a preacher. It's about do, do we care about do we care about these kids getting shot on a Friday night at a football game? Do we do we care about these girls getting raped? Do we care about what's going on? Do we care enough to, to really start moving in the power of kingdom power and, and uh, from heaven and, and then allowing it to manifest through us on this earth? and touching our community. Now watch this. So I've been in this journey for the last year. I'm seeing things about heaven and earth. I believe, I believe heaven and earth operates on parallel tracks. Now we're about to really step into this. The Bible says Satan approached God. Actually, the Bible said the sons, the sons of God, talking about the angels, approached God, came into the throne room of God to present themselves, and the Bible said, and Satan also. Satan, I mean, and God looked past all the angels and said, where have you been? Now, I've touched on this, so y'all know what I'm saying. Where have you been? In other words, I know where you've been. I know what the innumerable host of heaven have been. You give me an account of what you've been up to. What did he say? Going to and fro throughout all the earth. Y'all know the scripture. Up and down in it, up and down in it. And, and I'm, we're really about to get into this because I believe heaven and earth operate. If God wants this to operate the same as this, then he's got to give me some of this over here to work here to reflect that. Come on, this is, I know, I know. But I can't operate here like he wants me to act and, and operate from here if I've got no glory. He said, Satan said, I've been going up and down. Jacob said, I, he got to Bethel, and he said, this is the gate of heaven. He saw angels ascending and descending. In other words, he found an opening. He found a portal. Why do you think Hollywood is as funded as well as they are? Because Satan does not mind giving to them billions of dollars to put out lewd, crude, nasty, vile, old nasty Miley Cyrus swinging naked on a wrecking ball. And I, I'm, serious, I'm not ashamed to say it. Stinking Donna, Madonna, is that her name? Madonna, been doing it for years. Why do you think, how, they can't sing. They've got no real, they've got, listen, music was better in the 60s and 70s. We know that. But hell, Satan has learned the openings in the portal. And, and, and this is what God said, just to show you where I'm at. He said, your iniquity, the iniquity that I have against you is that you have learned my openings. You've learned, he said, your sin is thy trafficking. In other words, going up and down and taking what I've intended for the church to have, and the whole time hell can give Miley and all these other artists, little Wayne 69, tattoos all on his face. Look, look, he can get saved just like I could get saved. God can save him. But he doesn't mind giving them billions of dollars for something they can't see because he's taking another generation away from the church that ought to be funded and ought to be empowered and ought to have some glory and ought to have some power, ought to have some dominion, ought to have some weight behind their word and tell them that the Son of the living God died for them and is coming again for them, but he'll give you power to live in this earth right now. That deserved the hand clap, but don't hand clap because you ought to do it without me having to tell you to. So the next point is, is, is God's good. All right. Y'all get anything out of this so far? Okay. And, and so I hadn't even gotten to the openings in the portal. I, I, we're really close. We're really close. Because I'll be honest with you, I want to know how to get there. 
I'm, 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 I'm calling it. I'm speaking the word of God. I've learned. I've never. I, I never saw really uh, the word concerning my supernatural help, my, my angelic help, the innumerable host of heaven. Why are we fighting our battles on our own when we, all we have to do is speak God's word, and and, and they're in motion. He, you say that sounds so crazy. Uh, well, I, I know it. I know it does. But let me tell you something. We have no problem to meet uh, believing in demonic activity. So I believe in angelic activity. So watch this. About a year, a little over a year ago, the spirit of wisdom and revelation hit me. And, and, and concerning the portals and the openings, I, I don't want to give you the end result before I tell you the journey. So here's what we've got to do. This is what I want to give you tonight. Can I have about 15 more minutes? Ma'am? I can't? Okay, thank you. Every day for years and years and years, this is what I did. Ordained minister, uh, ordained in 94. I love my fellowship. I love the Pentecostal. I believe the church that came out of the upper room was a Pentecostal movement, not a, the Assemblies of God. Because we're not doing what they did when they came out of that upper room. So what they had, we don't have. They did have some of that, though. They had some power. And for every day I would get up and I would strap my helmet on, my breastplate, my, my, uh, my, my loins were girt. I would shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel of faith and the shield of faith and the sword of faith. I'd put on all of that armor and every day I'd go to battle. I'm going to beat you, devil. I'm going to beat you, devil. If I, just, if I even feel you, devil, I'm going to cut your head off for years and years and years until I came to the revelation. Satan was thoroughly defeated at Calvary for Ronnie. And when I got that revelation, <laughs> just about a little over a year ago, I took my helmet off. I'm serious. I took my helmet off. I took my breastplate off. I put my sword down, my shield down. I took the, the, my, the shoes off. I, I, I took all my warfare off. I don't put, I don't put it far by, you know, behind me or too far away from me. Because I understand that when I do have to go into warfare mode, what I have to use. You can, you can scrap all that stuff on, but if you don't have enough word in you, that's not going to do you much good. All right. So I took all that off. I took all of that off. And I understand my, my job, when I get up, listen, when I get up in the morning, I'm not getting up and I'm not saying this. I got to beat the devil before I even wash my face. I, man, I'll brush my teeth. That's the first thing I do in the morning. I got to brush my teeth, y'all. Hmm. You know how that... Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all so holy. Y'all don't have to brush your teeth, do you? Y'all don't even need scope. Ronnie needs some scope. Now, I'm going to tell you. I, first thing I do, I get up and brush my teeth. Dana, too. We brush our teeth before we go to bed. And, anyway. I don't get up and say, I'm going to beat you today, devil. I'm going to beat you... My job is not to get up. Your job is not to get up in the morning and beat the devil. What are you talking about, Pastor? That, listen, I've tied line upon line. I've tied, connected all of the dots. Listen, we are not commissioned to get up every morning and beat the devil. We're not. And we've got to get out of our mind this, 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 this concept. It's called dualism. What is dualism? Dualism is a teaching that preachers preach. They don't even know they're preaching it, that there is a, there is a power for God, but yet there is a co-equal power for devil. There is not a co-equal devil that's getting up. God and Satan are not getting up every day and say, Phew. Smith's getting some of this revelation now, and we got to fight it out. And they're not getting up every day. They're not fighting over Ronnie. They're not fighting over and none of you every morning. Listen to me. We don't teach this, and, and, and some of our churches aren't even teaching this because the preachers don't want to preach this because they want to tell you, well, you've got to beat the devil. You've got to get up in the morning and put your helmet on, put your breastplate on, take your shield, take your sword, gird your loins, put your shoes on, and you've got to go to battle. Listen, not every day supposed to be a battle. The Bible says I'm to plan for warfare in the time of peace. Dualism, if, and, and so preachers are getting up preaching, and, and I'm guilty of it. 
Well, the devil's out there fighting for Ronnie every day. No, he's not. Listen, there is no co-equal to God. There is no co-equal. In fact, God has no enemies. Satan is not an enemy. Watch this. I just taught on this a couple of weeks ago, got this revelation. I'm telling you, the spirit of revelation and wisdom hit me, and it, it, it's still on me. I've got, I've got the next year plan, not develop the plan of where God wants me to go. Satan and God are not fighting it out every day over us. Satan has thoroughly been defeated at Calvary. Now watch what God said. He, you know, there is no co-equal to God. God has no enemies. Jesus said, I remember the day when the rebellion took place. God said, I saw him fall just like that from heaven like lightning. But that's, and I thought that was the only, that's really what I thought God was talking about. When God told his disciples that, look what he was doing. He sent them out two by two in groups of 70. They came back and said, demons are subject to us. Demons are nothing but fallen angels. Demons are subject to us when we speak in your name. Why in the world are you got your breastplate on, your hat on, your short? Why you got all that warfare garb on when all you need is the word of God? Look at your neighbor and say, all you need is the name of Jesus. If I just speak the name of Jesus, hell trembles. If I just speak the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, hell shakes. If I just speak, I don't need a sword. I've got a name that's above every name. Man, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Listen, and the Bible said they're subject to us. He said every time you went to a city and you spoke my name and, 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 and hell was backing up and demons were he said, I saw them fa falling. Where were they falling from? Listen. We think Satan's in hell. We think demons are in hell. Come on, I told you. They're not in hell. Revelation teaches us that hell is reserved for Satan. Where's all the activity taking place? Right here, between here and here. That's why it should only take me two minutes to get my answer prayer when it's been taking me more than two years to get my answer prayer. Come on, uh, my, my, my prayer answered. It's because I understand that if I just keep exercising and I pray, Lord, I need this miracle. I'm believing you for this. I receive it, and God sends it back down here, but it gets held up here. All I have to do is keep speaking the name of Jesus, and every time I take authority over a demon, God, Jesus said, I saw it fall like lightning. I saw him fall like lightning. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, Ronnie, cancer has to fall. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, diabetes has to fall. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, poverty has to fall. I'm preaching better than you're even nodding tonight. I'm telling you, if we understood the power of the name of Jesus, we would take this town and turn it upside down. But you gotta have, you gotta have some glory. You gotta have some glory. I'm almost done. Give me, give me 10 more minutes. Dualism says that there's a good God and a co-equal bad devil getting up every day fighting over you and I. Listen, there is no co-equal to God. Matter of fact, the Bible says you do have an enemy. You do have an enemy. And he goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Satan. But watch this. God has no enemies. Why doesn't God have an enemy? Because there's no one equal to God. Who can stand against him? No one can stand against him. There's no struggle. So dualism is what preachers communicate without even realizing they're communicating because they preach so much about the devil. And you have to take authority over the devil's dominion. Uh, uh, you have to take dominion over the devil's authority over your life. Let me tell you something. The only authority Satan has or a demon has over you is what you give him. The only authority that the enemy can have is the ground that you're willing to give him back. Jesus came, took all authority from When he died, he went to the tomb. On the third day, he arose, but he ascended, or he descended, first of all, and he took from Satan the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he has given them to you and I so that we could walk through Macomb, Mississippi, empowered by the Holy Ghost of God to walk in glory, to walk in dominion, to have some authority, to be able to tell this world that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
We, we have authority to have dominion in the earth and to reestablish his kingdom in the earth and become forever. And, and so I just said, I'm, you know, you don't get up, don't get up. Here's what you don't do. You don't get up in the morning. I, don't, I really don't do this in the morning. I really don't. And I've done it for years. Get up in the morning because you hear preachers say, well, you got to get up and put your war clothes on. I got my war clothes on in the army. You know, the Lord got my war clothes on. That's an old church song. I'm sorry. Oh. And, and so what you have to do, get up and put your, all that on and, and just beat the devil. No, let me tell you something. Jesus did not go back to heaven and say, Ronnie, while I'm gone, while I'm gone, I want you to, to, to just get up and beat the devil every day. That's not what he said. But you read in Luke 19, he tells us what we're supposed to do every day. Occupy. Tell your neighbor, occupy. That's not, a new, that's not a new type of pie for Thanksgiving. That's what we're supposed to be doing. He said, I want you to occupy till I come. Occupy simply means take, to, uh, take territory that's already mine. It's mine. Tell your neighbor, so you got some territory. You better start taking it. Come on, say it, say, it, say it a little churchy tonight. Just, just humor a preacher. Say, neighbor, you got to start t uh, occupying and taking your territory. Say, come on, neighbor. You, thank you, Jesus. Well, if you'd have done that about 35 minutes ago, uh, this would have been a whole different sermon. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He said, he, he, he said occupy till I come. What, what are we giving up? What are we not receiving? What are we not walking in? I'm, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. I've never preached none of this in 30 years of ministry. And it all started on a lawnmower. It all started. Occupy, Ronnie. Occupy. God, God, God. Woo, I feel him. He said, Ronnie. He said, I gave, you're going to hear this again. He said, when, when I gave the Israelites a land that flowed with milk and honey, and I, and I told him, when did I give it to him? I said, well, God, that, that's over in Joshua chapter 6 and 7. Thought I knew my Bible pretty good, you know, trying to impress God. Now, I'm just being serious. He said, that's not when I gave it. I said, that's exactly when you gave it to him. And that's exactly when they walked in it, God. He said, that's not when I gave it to them. I said, God, let me, let me take you to your book. I took him to Joshua chapter 6, and I started reading to God his word. Now see, now, see, something's happened to me, though, in the last year, to where God and I have gotten a lot closer, or I've gotten a lot closer. Well, God and I have gotten a lot closer. Let me prove that by Scripture. You draw out of God, God has drawn out of you. But you got to do something to out. You got to resist the devil. Can't cut. Don't don't drag the devil up in front of God. If God needs to talk to him, he'll summon him. How many y'all love me? All right. Where was it, Lord? I said Joshua six and seven. He said that's not when I gave it to him. I said that's when they walked in. He said I asked you when did I give it to him. I said, oh, well, I, I, I got to study that one. He said, let me help you out. Remember Moses? I said, yeah, I know, I know Moses. Remember the mountain? Yes, Lord, the one that I just preached on last Sunday. I burned with fire and smoke and black and darkness and all of that, and everybody was afraid because Israel done built a golden calf and ticked God off, and he's up there talking. Long before, that, long before that ever happened, he saw a bush burning, went up there and said, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. And he told Moses then, he said, before you even go deliver my people, I've given them a land. I said, good God Almighty, you got my attention now. So over in Genesis, God gave them the land that it took them years to get to in Joshua chapter 6 and 7. God, God's already given you the territory. All you got to do is go occupy it. Hey, hey, hey. So much for Bible study. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So, so he said, occupy, occupy, occupy. I've given you a land that's yours, flowing with milk and honey. I've marked it off. It's got your name on it. Now go take it. Now go take it. Now I'm closing. Watch this. That's Old Testament, Pastor, you know. Uh, a lot of mega church pastors are saying we don't need the Old Testament today. They, they really are. We're New Testament, New Covenant Christians. The Old Testament has no impact on our life. Now, now watch this. If that's true, I don't believe it. It's not true. All scripture is given by inspiration for God. Okay. The New Testament equivalent of that is we've been given great and precious promises. Second Peter chapter 1. If you have it in your Bible, just look at it real quick or hyperlink your phone, whatever. Second Peter 1. Verses 1 through 3, and, and I'll be done in about five minutes. Y'all getting anything out of this? See, see, this is all new. This is, I've never preached this. So, th I, I, Matter of fact, this was so new. Uh, Connie, she asked me every day. She, she likes to read what I'm going to teach from. So I send her my notes just as I, excuse me, as I finish them. So, so this is why I'm so stuck to my notes is because this is all fresh word for Ronnie. But it's better. It, I've got it better ingrained in my spirit. A year later, I'm understanding this more. Okay, Second Peter chapter one verses one through three. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Have you ever seen the likes of the apostles coming out of the woodworks today? Man, everybody's an apostle today. Man, I got listen. <laughs> there's a there's a preacher. I can't. I, I, I shouldn't do this. But there's a preacher in church. A uh, preacher in town. And. Uh, they got, they got got a little church going on and hadn't been in ministry very long and, and, and he's already an apostle. About two years of ministry behind him, he's already... And I'm thinking, where's the seasoning? Where, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Everybody, man, you can become an apostle today off the back of the National Enquirer. Just clip it off, fill it out, and you'll get credentials and you can be ordained and an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, whatever. Okay. To those who... To those who... To those who, who are those, that's you and I, who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Watch what he said. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. That's where the church is wrong. We're not, we're not teaching the knowledge of God. We're coming to church and preacher with a charismatic uh, personality, getting you all whooped up and sweating and everything. And woo man, didn't the preacher burn today? Come back next week, and we shout, and we holler, and sweat, and everything. Sweat off five pounds, and you ought to stop and be glad for that, and then we go to Golden Corral and put ten on. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us what? Some, some, some things now. No, come on now, Brother Joe. Some things. Now, come on Come on now. No, a couple of things now. Come on. No, come on. Let's not be greedy now. A few things. Come on. All things. All things. All things. Were they... Let me ask you a question. If you go out in the parking lot and you see a $100 bill and you walk up on it, and you look down there and it's under your feet, what you doing? I, I tell you what, who, who's got a hundred? Frank, you got a $100 bill on you? Doggone, boy, did I not be led by prophecy right there. Hallelujah. Who? Uh-oh, no, take that money back. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh Oh, not in Jesus' name, I'm not going there. <laughs> That's funny right there. And you gave it up, big boy. If I walk up on it, what do you do? You beat down people. Listen, he said, occupy what's under your feet. Occupy. Watch it, all things that pertain, here it is, to life. You're supposed to be blessed. Yes. He said, all things that pertain to life. You, you're not going to need stuff when you get to heaven. Can I have an amen there? You're not going to need anything 
when you get to heaven. He said, all things that pertain to life. Life where? Where do you live, Macomb? You're supposed to have all things. He said, I hadn't seen it because I've been wearing this one out. I didn't, no, I didn't even wear that because I hadn't seen it for 30 years. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to work on that one for 30 more. All things. He said, I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of Ronnie Smith the that pertain All right. Oh, thank you. It's not going to do us any good if we get up in the morning and say, well, i got to get up and fight for what's mine. You don't have to fight for it. If, but, but Joe said it well ago. It has been thoroughly paid for by the blood of Jesus and Calvary. So you get up in the morning, and your struggle is to occupy. That's my struggle, is to occupy. Well, one thought. I talked to you this sometime back. In the wilderness, they lived in tents. Is that right? But when they got to the promised land to where they were supposed to be, what did they build? They built houses. You build houses when you get to your promise. You don't build houses while you're traveling to your promise. Don't build houses while you're going through the wilderness. 
You live in tent till you can pack it up. And then when you get into your destiny, then you build your house. Amen, somebody. So, so in the morning, you get up. And, and, and you know, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I like Jesse. Uh, and so you get up in the morning, you just start walking. You've been cra- you don't have to walk in it because you're already crowned with glory. He crowned you. He crowned you. As a child of God, when you get this revelation, you've got glory on you. Your words have weight. Your words have impact. Your image is of God. Your reflection is of God. You're praying. Every time when you prayed, when you prayed, God heard it, sent your answer. Amen. And every prayer after that, it's not that God just likes to hear us repeat prayer. No, every prayer after that, you're just moving angels. Angels are moving to get your answer here. God sent Michael for Daniel. God's going to send you extra help to get your, your, your answers, your prayers answered. So when you get up in the morning, you don't have to beat the devil. He's already beat. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to beat him another day. Can it, I'm going to, I'm, matter of fact, you've got such supernatural help. All of this bleeds into each other. Your supernatural help, I believe there are angels in this room right now. I believe that with all of my heart. I don't care if you think it's crazy or not, but when you have to fight hell like I've had to, I ain't got no problem believing in angelic help. Amen. I'll tell you something else. I'm more careful of what I do, not just because I don't want to dishonor my God, but now I've got supernatural beings who, who cry one to another, holy, holy, holy. What if I take my angel off and he says, oh, Smith, you can just scratch it up, big boy, until you get your act. Now, no, they, they respond. I'm, I'm with God, I need so much. They respond to the, to the voice of God's word, not the voice of God, but the voice of God's word. So when I speak God's word, it moves them into action. Okay, so when you get up in the morning, you just you don't have to beat the devil. You get up and say, God, I'm going to occupy what you've given me. What is it that God's given you that you need to accomplish your purpose, your destiny in Macomb? Now, if, if your goal is just to own a big old Jed Clampett mansion, but there's no kingdom connection to it, don't look for it to happen. If you got an apartment, and won't clean it now. So here's what I'm praying. I'm praying every. I'm going to pray for y'all in the morning. That when, that when you get up, favor, glory, virtue, dominion, authority, so overwhelms you. You get up, and you just know it's going to be a great day for the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, you're going to have the best days of your life. And come Sunday, we're going to wear that preacher out. Can I give you one nugget? Can I give you one nugget for Sunday? I'm bad about this. We've been talking about angels. I'm so excited. I, I, I am. We've been talking about Psalm 103, verse 20. You angels of God who, who excel in strength and who heed the voice of his word. Not the voice of God, but the voice of his word. So when you speak the word of God, just quote it. And if I give you this, y'all gotta act like y'all didn't hear it tonight and y'all gotta y'all gotta wear me out Sunday, okay? I got this just just the other day and I finished Sunday's message today. The word in the King James says hearkening. The word in the King James says heeding. Same same thing. When you speak the Word of God, the Word of God has its own frequency. I shouted better than that in my office. I'm saying, I said, what do you mean? It has, he said, when you speak my Word, it has such a frequency to it that it rings my ear. Inst- this microphone in the sound booth in there is better, but this, this microphone is working off a certain frequency off of that receiver in there, and you can hear my voice because of the frequency. Y'all missing it. Oh, y'all missing it. The Word of God has its own frequency. You've got your own frequency. God hears your voice 
in this room, all of y'all could be saying, Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. And Dana can say, Ronnie, right in the middle of all of y'all's Ronnie. And I hear her frequency. I've been obeying that frequency for 32 years. Amen. And come Sunday, I'm going to do a cartwheel off that, off that one. So your voice has a frequency. Heaven responds when you speak the frequency of God's word. My God, I want to shout. I look at your neighbor. Last time I'm going to tell you, talk to your neighbor. Then I look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you speak, you have such a frequency that God get, it gets God's attention. Father, I, I, I pray that I'm, I'm teaching. I pray that I'm teaching. I pray that I'm, I'm teaching this, Holy Ghost of God. All things have been given to us that pertain to life. All things. All things. I, walk, I, I take authority. I walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in that glory. What a year. What, what, what I thought was going to kill me, you showed me it couldn't because you were teaching me. I understand it now. I'm possessing now what I understand. So tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, I pray, I pray God that they walk in such anointing and power and dominion and authority and glory that people are just changed. When they, just, like, just like Paul, when he walked past them, their, their shadow would fall on people and people would get saved and healed and delivered. Let them have that kind of glory that whatever they speak to, God, you back it up. I thank you for all of, all of your plans coming to pass in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said amen. Hug somebody by the neck and say, Occupy. Occupy America. Amen. We're going to take for America. You better watch out. See, God had me turn around just in time.